Nursing homes were the epicenter of the pandemic early on before the vaccines were available. And here with us to talk more about the impact that Omicron is having is Dr. Andre Campbell. He's a physician and professor of surgery at the University of California, San Francisco. Dr. Campbell, welcome back to BNC Live. Good to have you as always. We just told you about Thank the you, U.S. Sir. Surgeon General coming out and saying that Omicron hasn't reached its peak. We need to buckle up for the coming weeks. When do you think we're going to see the height of Omicron? Well, Vern, thanks again for having me uh, today. Uh, we're getting ready to go through, as the Surgeon General just uh, said, as you alluded to, we're getting ready to go through a very difficult period. We're going to have a big upswing. You know, we're projected to peak within the next two weeks here in San Francisco, where I am. But there are places in New York that may be on the downswing. But nationwide, we're still having a major problem. There's 150,000 people who are currently hospitalized with about 25,000 or so in the ICU with about 800,000 cases, as Dr. Fauci just said, as you as you noted. It's going to be a rough ride over the next couple of weeks. So we need to make sure we double down and do what is safe and make sure. Now, vaccinated is, means that fully vaccinated to me now means you get three shots. Vaccinated and boosted, I think a three is a new two. So that's a message I want to make sure I start out with with you and the viewers. Three is the new two. Wow. Okay. Um, the World Health Organization, they are recommending two new drugs to treat COVID, one of which is an oral medical used to treat arthritis. I was wondering if you could tell us about that. So this is actually good news. So uh, this is a drug that has been around for a few years. It is called baricitinib. So that's a, a fancy name, but it's just a name. The other name before it is Illumiant. It is put out by uh, Eli Lilly. So uh, it's been around for about three years and it's used uh, for people with rheumatoid arthritis because what it does is it turns down the body's immune response. And that is really what you want when these immune responses on. So it's given by mouth. It's given if you have the infection and it is now being approved by the FDA. So this is actually some good news for people who are already infected. Best thing is to get vaccinated, but if you're infected, which is what's going on around the country, you need to see if we can get hold of that. Now, it may be sparse to begin with, but it is something that we have good news we have to look forward to in the midst of the negative news about the pandemic. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. That is great to hear you saying that. Could it be a game changer for lower income areas that have struggled to contain the spread? Well, I think that when available, uh, it will be. But as you know, it has to go through the approval of the mass produced. It has to be available. So I think that it is a good thing. And I would hope that it would become more widely available. Right now, we're just kind of starting down this road. So as you start down the road, it is not as available as, as, it, as it is would be in six months or say uh, right now. So people honestly are getting really tired of the masks, the shot the booster, the restrictions, it goes on and on and on. And some people are getting the mentality, well, you know what, this just has to go through the population until the entire country gets immune and it just, you know, goes on moving forward like a flu. What do you say to those people who are just sort of over it and they're like, you know what, just let it run through the population until it turns over and it's just a normal part of our lives? Well, the first thing I'll say to those people is that you don't want to get this virus. It's not like a common cold. It is actually worse. And the problem is, is that there's this thing called long COVID, which you have heard about, where we don't know who's going to get it or not. We don't know if you got Delta, who's going to get it. As some people say it's 10%, some 25% of symptoms, whether the respiratory fatigue, fogginess of the brain, all these things, joint pain. You don't want to have that. So first of all, you got to bear with it. Now, the mask, I wear, I'm a surgeon, I wear a mask all day, and the mask is painful, and I don't like wearing it, but getting a high-quality mask could save you from getting an infection. So my, my response to those people is, don't let it run through you and your family. Stay protected. You got to hunker down as we go through this next wave. As we get through this next wave, uh, hopefully things will get better. The good thing in some ways is maybe there's more people in the hospital, but there's fewer people in the ICU with the Omicron variant, but we're still very early in this. To remember, every day, there are 2,000 people dying every day from this virus. It's not the flu. 
So you don't want to be in those numbers. A lot of those people are unvaccinated. So the thing you don't want to do is be in that group of people. So think about this. A 9-11 is happening every day. Think about how 9-11 impacted us after it happened. But that's happening every day now. And that's a real problem. And you have to sort of think that as you, oh, this is a regular thing. This is not regular time. So we have to rise to the occasion, hold on, and get through this. Yeah, and the whole wearing masks, people have been resisting from the beginning. But I mean, in countries like China, they've been wearing masks for years. And I'm not sure if you're even aware of what's happening with China right now in terms of their COVID numbers, because they all wear masks. Uh, but can we learn anything about using these masks and, and how effective they are? Well, the masks do work. Unfortunately, it's been politicized. We've talked about this before. It's been too politicized. They work. Uh, have a high quality mask now because Omicron is very infectious. It's important. So get the highest quality you can. If you have cloth, get a surgical mask, surgical mask, get an N5. So get the highest quality mask that you can, you know, right now. They do work. They're quite helpful and they can protect you and your family from getting the virus. So I would say, urge you to keep on, hold on with the mask. I mean, I've been to Japan and I noticed people wearing masks even before this, you know, 10, 15 years ago, but that's because they had a cold and they wanted to protect everybody else. This is something that is quite common in that part of the world. Uh, and, and that is common in our part of the world. And we need to change that. Yeah, I, I would say that people really need to understand how significant it is. Thank you so much, Dr. Campbell. As always, we appreciate you joining us and appreciate everything you do as a healthcare provider. Take care. And the sequel to Black Panther, is it going to happen? One of the